Hello everyone, welcome to Literary Gladiators, a show where today I get to discuss and uh, debate some literature in uh, all of its forms. So as Josh would always say, if it's written work, it's game. And then I would come along and say something stupid like chess or origami building. I don't know if that's a game or not, but you know. So anyway, welcome to our channel. Um, to our newest subscribers, thank you for all of uh, for do um, donating. Thank you for subscribing. Uh, you're in for a wild ride, especially with me at the helm sometimes. But yeah, I'm sure you're going to enjoy this very much. And uh, today I have something I wanted to discuss. It was a story that Josh assigned me because I was I'm, I'm working a lot and I always and I never get a chance to really say hmm what do I really want to do for an individual video. So I like it when Josh assigns me something so I can read it. And it was from, oh, what was the name of it? I already forgot. <laughs> um, it was, it was, a, I think it was, um, it was from Cro Crodor Blue. I'm probably going to butcher this. Um, a Stone Boy or something about, you know, it's a, court, it's, it's um, you know, it's Native American, Indian, and uh, tale. And it's, I read it, and it's, you know, it's a short read, but it's also something I really thought, wow, what? The heck were they on when they wrote this? Now, right off the bat, I'm giving it five stars out of five because, you know, to me it spoke, it really spoke to me. And, um, again, it, it just the, it, it sounds, it's, it's, it's good for Halloween, let's put it that way. I would think it's good for Halloween. Quick synopsis here, um, four, four brothers, they're together. And one by one they go missing, and you know, they you know, the one of them he stubs his toe or he hits his big toe, and he's in so much pain, and it goes away, and then it comes back, and then apparently it gets to the point where it's the size of a head, where it's in the text, um, and apparently that is not a tumor or anything, thank God, but it's a small boy. So a boy is born from the big toe on the male. Now you do the math on that one. I didn't do so well in science and, you know, stuff like that. But um, obviously we know it's just, you know, maybe a cautionary tale, whatnot. The Indians and the Native Americans, I want to make, sh make this real clear, uh, they love the land. They are all so very um, near and dear to the land. Um, nature is their god, pretty much. Um, the sun, this moon, the stars, trees... In this book, uh, book in this story, rocks, um, trees again. Um, I think hills, and um, just I think even fire. There was something about I think fire in there. I read it earlier this morning, so I should, it's still fresh up here. Um, I want to really hammer home is what happened was like I said, at, you know, first this, this big toe gives birth to a, a boy, but he's made of stone. And he's apparently going to be a liberator. He's going to be um, someone who helps and sets people free. So he gets older, he gets older. And now, mind you, his mother, you know, apparently he has a mother now. Um, I for forgot how that happened. Um, but I do know the four brothers did go missing. And he, the, his mother would go out on every, I think it was every uh, full or... Um, Every, I think it was every full moon or whole moon or something along those lines, to mourn. And he one day figured, he was, you know, he's grown up now, and he went up, he said, Mom, why do you mourn? And she sang him a song, and then he sang something back to her, which I found to be really, really uh, beautiful, just very touching, mother to son. And apparently he takes it upon himself to go out and find those four brothers, because one by one, they all said, I will go and get this woman the precious, uh, uh, you know, g garments, whatnot. We'll just say garments for now. He never comes back. And the other brother says, I will go and get the freshest meat for her. So she, will, you know, never comes back. The yellow, and the, like what, etc., etc. I'm thinking of the Godfather right now, okay? <laughs> just kidding. Uh, bad joke. Um... You know, the, eventually the, become, the, the night comes where they all gather around the townspeople and 
They have a big feast for this young boy. Well, you know, he, probably a young boy. They didn't give that an age, but he goes out on that quest. He has a magical shield, which will shield him from any harm. They give him a, they give him some kind of charm, which will help him with... Um, I, I don't I don't know every, every off the top of my head. Like I said, I just read it this, this morning. But um, they give him a charm. He has a, um, a heavy stick, um, and that is supposed to ward off anything that will come in, like a tree, or a tree branch, he would hit it, and that tree, it's gone. Um, a spear, which would guarantee every target, so things like that. And then he, a cloak, which now we're going Harry Potter on, you know. The cloak would actually conceal him, he'd be invisible. You know, and, and they they sang songs, they ate a lot of food, and, you know, it's basically like the going away party. So he goes out, he sets, and then he says something along the lines like, I go forth now, or something like that. And, um, oh, the moccasins, by the way, the moccasins. They have a, they're very special. It's the point where he can climb hills, you know, and I, he doesn't even need a 4x4, four four, okay? He can literally just climb the hills and look down into the valleys like this. And climb other hills, just from hill to hill, without having to worry. So he goes out. He's doing what he has to do. Valley after valley, he doesn't find them. Now he's starting to find remnants from the other four uh, people. Oh, there was I think an arrowhead. One, okay. Then there was a um, a knife for the uh, the second. Whatever. I'm like I said. I'm just paraphrasing here. Um, and he's saying, oh, I th you know, he's getting closer and more. And you know, he's like, okay, he finds them. Then, out of nowhere, this big, huge bear attacks him, and he knocks the bear down with the... Uh, first, it's a coy actually, no, first a coyote gets at him, and the coyote is jumping up and down, jumping up and down. Um, good if you're on LSD, maybe. Just kidding. I have a lot of bad dad jokes, so... Uh, <laughs> and I, I, I just found that... This is where I really found out it should be good for Halloween, because a coyote jumping up and down, up and down... And getting higher each time, it gets, you know... To me, that really spooked me out a little bit. I would not want to drive down the road and see a coyote going up and down, up and down. I'm like, well, screw this. <laughs> Floor it. So, maybe there's some mysticism behind that. I don't know. Um, again, everything is sacred to the Indians. Everything, you know, uh, trees, the sky, the water. Everything has purpose, has meaning. And that's, you know... And just to finish up here, after the coyote attacks him, he, he you know he won't he does not get hurt. He is shielded from all and any and all danger, so he's fine. He you know he not he finishes off the coyote. He finishes off the bear who has a big. This is a big bear too, not just some bear you would find. It, uh, it made it out uh, to be like this humongous bear which had in its claws people of some sort from tribes or whatnot. And they were turned to stone or whatnot. It, like I said, it was very, very um, interesting, especially around this part. And then he finds out who was um, the one who was behind all this, the evil spirit. And she is portraying herself as an old lady, and she's trying to trick him. But he knows, and he's actually her master, and she doesn't know that yet. So she tries to kill him by you know, inviting him in. Oh, don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. I'm a frail old woman. Which is, turns out to be a lot of uh, potato soup, shall we say. So, end of, you know, end of... Uh, coming to the end here, it ends up where he eventually obliterates her. Oh, because she will not, con con you know, she will not cooperate. Where are these people? And she decides not to tell them. And then she, you know, gets... It, it, really, it's just it's mind-boggling to me, and um, you know it's uh, she, she starts to cooperate once he starts putting the pressure. He starts to stomp on her feet and flatten her, and then she starts. Oh, actually, it's a he. Excuse me, I'm sorry, he. But she portrays herself as an old woman, so whatever. Um, then you have it where it's. Um, he flattens the kneecaps, the knees, and whatnot, flattening it her into the earth, where basically what will be done, what you did to all of these people, will now be done to you for eternity. Basically, just to conclude, I found this to be really, really 
and I don't mean this in a derogatory way. I, 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 for, for a minute, I wanted to say whack that, but no. There is so much to this that even I can't wrap my head around. I'm going to have to read it again and again and again. And that's what we do as literature uh, majors and people who just love to read. We reread things. And I read it only once, but I wanted to uh, have it where I could understand it. And I would go back and say to myself, oh, so that's what that meant. So, again, great read. It's also... I don't know what else to say about it. Just I really, I very much enjoyed it, and it, I think it would be good for Halloween if you want to tell the little kids, you know, if they're not being behaving. So, um, again, I said I was going to give it a five out of five, and I stand by that. Five out of five cookies, maybe. Um, and anyway, this has been Literary Gladiators.